Hi, my name is Reggie and I'm an engineer here at National Instruments. And today I'd like to introduce you to the NI platform for audio and video testing, which consists of video analyzers and generators and audio analyzers and generators that are ideal for high performance, high throughput applications, such as testing the latest consumer electronics devices like Blu-ray players, set-top boxes, mobile devices, headsets, and even HD TVs. To really show you the performance and throughput of this application, uh, what I'd like to do is show you a demo where we're going to test all of the audio and video ports on a Blu-ray player. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware that we're going to use. Here I have an 8-slot PXI Express chassis that has a quad-core embedded controller in it that's running all of the software for our demo. In the first slot here we have an analog video analyzer that's going to be used to test the composite and component video interfaces. Next we have our HDMI analyzer that's going to be used to test the HDMI 1.4 protocol and the HDMI video. Next we have the analog audio analyzer that will be used to test the left and right stereo audio outputs from the device. And finally we have our SPDIF audio analyzer that's that can be used to test not only SPDIF but also the embedded HDMI uh, coming out from the, uh, the Blu-ray player. So you can see that this system is a pretty uh, compact and rugged and portable system. And now if you compare that to a traditional approach, we would probably have to purchase a boxed instrument for each one of these uh, modules that we have in here, that each one of those would probably be running different software. So now that we've taken a look at the hardware in this system, let's go ahead and take a look at the software that we'll be using today. Here I have the NI test and sequence editor opened where I've written a couple of uh, tests where we can perform all of the audio and video testing. You can see here that I have a couple of sequences written uh, for my video testing and my audio testing and this is going to allow us to do all of our audio and video tests in parallel. So let's open up the video test sequence and the first thing that I'd like to do is just open up one of the uh, video measurement suite test steps where we're analyzing the composite video horizontal timing. So I'm going to open up this step really fast and the first thing that I'm going to quickly do is go ahead and just in initialize the hardware that we're going to be using and then I'm going to just simply acquire the video frame so that we can take a look at what is coming out from this Blu-ray player. So if we go to the picture here Oh, here we can see, actually see that we're in the menu of the Blu-ray player. So let me just play the, start playing the, uh, the Blu-ray. And we'll acquire the video signal. And here we can actually see the test pattern that's being generated by the Blu-ray player. So what I'd like to do is just go to one of the horizontal lines, say for instance the color bar, and view that line. And here we can see the color bar uh, signal for the composite video. And it, as simple as that, we were able to acquire and take a look at the horizontal line. Now the next thing that we would probably want to do is perform a quick measurement on that horizontal timing. So here I'm just going to go to the measurements tab, click measure, and here we're measuring the, uh, all of the horizontal line timing on that composite video signal. We can see everything about the sync pulse uh, as well as information about the blanking. So this is just one, one step or one measurement that we would probably want to perform on the composite video. You can see here we're performing a, a set of tests on the composite video. Next, I'm going to open up one of the uh, HDMI test steps for us to take a look. And here, I'm, again, I'm just going to acquire, this time on the HDMI interface, using the HDMI analyzer. And if we jump over to the picture tab, we can see the high definition image uh, that we acquired from the Blu-ray player. And here if we view the line, we can see the YUV color channels for the HDMI signal. Now what you can see here is that we're using the same interface for doing both the analog video measurements and the HDMI measurements, which makes it easier to develop the applications if you're using the same software for both measurements. So if we jump back to the software here, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this step. And we can see that we're performing a, a, a large set of of tests on the HDMI interface, the composite video interface, as well as the component video interface of this Blu-ray player. Now I'm going to go back to the, my top level sequence here and instead of uh, diving into the video sequence, let's dive into the audio test sequence. And here I'm just going to edit the configuration 
and we're going to open up our, our audio measurement suite, which uh, is Audio Master, and we'll take a, a couple of quick measurements on the audio signal. First, I'm going to go back and, and make sure that my Blu-ray player is, is playing again. Um, so I'll just hit play. And if we execute this setup, what we should see is we can see here the, the frequency response, which is just a one kilohertz tone that is being generated by the player. If we wanted to, we could even look at, uh, let me go to the results here and actually choose the time record and execute. And here we can actually see that one kilohertz tone. And we could even zoom in on it if we wanted to, 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 to be able to see the actual sine waves. We can, we can even see that there's a little noise or a, a little uh, disturbance on this signal. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. And we can see that we're doing that for both uh, the left and right stereo audio as well as the SPDIF audio, again, using the same interface for the audio measurements. And we're going to perform common measurements such as uh, am measuring the amplitude, the frequency response, THD, and a couple of others. Instead of executing this in the test and development environment, what I'd like to do is open up a LabVIEW operator interface where we can execute this just as an operator would in a production type environment. So let's go ahead and look back at the software. And here you can see the operator interface that I created that's going to update the operator uh, on how well each of these uh, components is passing the test that we've written for them. So we, we're going to get a pass fail for each one of these various components here. So the first thing that I would want to do is simply load up the sequence that we wrote in test stand and here it's going through its, its primary initialization steps uh, which might be done at the beginning of the day where it's loading up the software, it's initializing all of the hardware in our system and it's just getting prepared to run all of the tests uh, that we might cycle through uh, for multiple times. And you can see here that once we're done it's going to give us an overall test time, it's going to give us information about the CEC version of the Blu-ray player uh, and, and also give us the test image and the audio tone uh, that we're measuring. So now that we have everything ready to go, we can go ahead and click Run Test. And you can see on the top, in the top box here, we're measuring uh, all of the audio interfaces, the an analog and digital audio. And then the HDMI composite and component video tests are being done below. So you can see here that we did all of these tests, over 400 different measurements on the audio and video interfaces in about 6.5 seconds. And that is parallel testing on the audio and video interfaces. Now I hope you can see that if we added a couple of other modules to this system for HDMI switching or audio switching, we could very easily scale this to be an 8 UUT test system uh, where we could automate all of the tests on 8 set-top boxes or 8 Blu-ray players in parallel. So thanks and have a great day.